Crush Welcome it. to Come Unsung. Here. I'm your host, Anthony Walker. It's a special week at Unsung. We have two episodes coming your way with three great stories each. And on that note, we have another change. Unsung has a brand new format with three features per episode. We want to be able to tell great nonprofit stories and feel this format will allow us to do just that. If you like the future politicians last week that developed the Student Bill of Rights, then we give you the future business leaders at Urban Pathways Charter School. Plus, Unsung made two special visits to Sisters Place and the Andy Warhol Museum. Sisters Place are helping single parents get back on their feet. Let's find out how and hear from one of the early families that have come a long way through the service. Sisters Place is a nonprofit that services homeless single parents and their children. We provide housing and supportive services and we're located in Clareton but we service all of southwestern Pennsylvania. So this year on November 12th, 2013, we celebrated our 20th anniversary of our incorporation which is really an exciting milestone for us. We like to look at um, transitioning from homelessness um, as with this model where we are not just looking at the need for housing like the physical structure but we're looking at resources and support that really helps people to transition from homelessness to independent living. We do service moms and dads and their children. The transitional program is for folks who are uh, facing more of an acute situation that has caused their homelessness where the permanent program is for folks who have a disability, either um, physical or mental health disability, including addiction, and so that's more long-term support. It's all about opportunity, providing an opportunity to folks to be all that they can be, really. Making sure that they have the resources and um, the opportunities to move on to the next step in their life, to move past and beyond homelessness. And that homelessness uh, impacts all of us. Um, you think that homelessness is just um, you know, a certain area of town or a certain type of person, but it's not at all. Um, you could literally be running into somebody at work and just not know what they're going through at home. Every day something happens here that touches me and makes me grateful that I have this job. And you'll find that with all the staff. We have 12 people that work here that love their jobs and love the work that they do. I tell people all the time, uh, without Sister's Place in our life, I don't think it would have been an easy journey as it was. But Sister's Place was there for us. They gave us a new start. They gave us what we needed to um, go about our journey and not have to worry about housing or um, how the bills were gonna get paid or food in the house and stuff. And basically they gave us that push that we needed to go forward in life. The younger generation, it kept the kids off the street. It gave them something to look forward to when they got out of school, instead of just going out and running the streets and doing whatever the streets are offering. This lets you know you have a safe haven, almost, to come to. And it helps you keep focused on what you need to do in life, as far as, oh, I'm just going to go outside and I'm done with school, I don't need to do nothing no more. No, life's not about that. There's still all kind of opportunities you can have at Sister Place lets you know that those opportunities are there for you. You just gotta take them. Yeah, it made me stronger pretty much just by watching my mom, seeing what she, how we came up here. She raised two kids to be grown men. Um, my brother has a family of his own. He just got married. I also have a girlfriend, hopefully to get married shortly in the near future with her. I ran into one of the moms who, um, whose little boy just turned one, who I remember when he was just an infant. And she's doing amazing. She's going back to school to be an RN. The little boy is doing amazing. He's just about to learn how to walk. Um, and she's down at the program center, like right now, volunteering to help us with our food bank. There's lots of ways to get involved. Um, a little goes a long way here. We have folks who come in and help us with mailings. We have volunteers help us on events. Of course, a dollar does a lot too. <laughs> you know, making donations helps a lot too. Um, but not just cash donations. Um, you can donate uh, non-perishable food, um, diapers. Um, um, it's always helpful to call in about donations to make sure that we can um, place them with somebody where they'll be used. Um, but just, I would just recommend that somebody give us a call or send us an email. You can call us at 412-233-3903. And look for us online. Our website is www.sistersplace.org. 
You can like us on Facebook. You can pin us on Pinterest. You can tweet us on Twitter. You can look for us on YouTube, but we're trying really hard to embrace social media. But when you go to our website, we have all those links right on there. So you can find us wherever you're socializing. We're trying to be too. Sure. We have universities like Carnegie Mellon spinning out entrepreneurs, and Pittsburgh is a great place to start a business. But Urban Pathways Charter School recognized entrepreneurial talent at a far younger age. The school began an entrepreneur program two years ago. Students get introductory classes in 7th and 8th grade, start a business in 11th, and intern their senior year. The first students started in ninth grade and now in 11th have launched individual businesses or partnerships with other students. That wasn't enough though. For these young leaders, they decided to launch a class business called Urban 98 Apparel that could be handed down to the next set of students. The company began by printing school spirit t-shirts for sale at the school. To get started, the students raised $2,000 with the help of Leadership Pittsburgh. They have since expanded and now offer design and printing t-shirts to local small businesses. So, need a t-shirt for your business? You can email them at urban98apparel at yahoo.com, check them out on Facebook at urban98apparel, or even on Twitter at urban98apparel. November was National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month. We can think of no better way to make you aware of this disease than to tag along with Presbyterian Senior Care's visit to the Andy Warhol Museum. Each month, our residents create a piece of art and have an opportunity to create a connection. Hi, I'm Jen Marasco. I'm the social worker at Woodside Place, uh, and we're here today to talk about uh, the Warhol program that we do with our residents and adult day participants. Oh, we're here to experience and enjoy the day at Andy Warhol Museum, where we work on different art projects, where we get to go and tour the studio, where we have a nice little um, breakfast, nice lunch, and we get to bring out the inner artist in all of us. When I was going to different events in the community and the University of Pitt, they put on a presentation called Forget Memory, um, and it was down at the Rodef Shalom building. Uh, and Tressa Varner, who works at the Warhol Museum, she was one of the panel speakers there. And she discussed some of the programs that the Warhol does, uh, specifically uh, with individuals with dementia and also with children. And I was aware of a program that Woodside Place does called In the Moment, and we partner with Carnegie Museum of Art. And I thought it'd be a great way to connect with the Warhol and to go to a different museum um, and to expand you know, our resources. Focus on hands-on activities such as painting totes or doing an underpainting and then silk screening later on in the day on top of those totes. We also go up into the galleries and have an educational component um, in which we talk about Andy Warhol, his process, his childhood, as well as his practice and his influence on pop art. It's amazing what we produce, what we create, and um, the families love it because we always get to bring back a little art piece from our project, which is really incredible and nice. And we've done different things through the course of our visits here. Um, we usually do some screen prints as well as we do some the Warhol Daily News, which is something that we really do a lot of reminiscing with. It's amazing. You'll have people who really don't talk that much, um, who are reserved, who will come down here, and you give them you know, a paintbrush and a canvas, and you know, they get to express themselves. They'll start giggling, they'll start laughing, they'll start spontaneously having conversations. I can't tell you all the um, exciting moments we have, from breaking out in tune, to when we talked about um, that musical, I Feel Pretty. We also go into the um, cloud room where there's um, installations of the clouds coming and the residents just um, play a little softball with that. Um, and it's really fun. When we go up to the exhibits, that's the amazing part as well. Um, you know, we'll bring up the memories of Elvis and JFK and um, Jackie Onassis. And so they'll spark, start spontaneously telling us stories from when they were in high school. Um, one lady in particular, <laughs> she was telling us a story about Elvis Presley, came to her high school. And so that went into a whole story about that. And then she ended up singing and dancing for us, which then allows other people to sing and dance. And we were up in the galleries and the art educators were laughing at us and joining in. And so it's just a fun way, you know, to let them share their stories and then be goofy. Well, currently on at the Warhol, we're looking to expand our access, accessibility programs, which is really exciting. Um, that can include the visually impaired, um, blind, hearing impaired, uh, people with Alzheimer's or dementia. So we're really trying to reach out to diverse communities and bring them into the museum. Um, 
and have this educational program about engagement and process and practice and making art and learning about Andy Warhol. Um, so the art educators, what they've done to um, educate themselves um, on what our residents are going through is they actually come through our dementia training, um, which is an all-day event at Woodside Place. So uh, we get to bring our residents down here and they get to experience them in this environment, but they actually get to come to their homes at Woodside Place in Oakmont um, and get to see where they live and where they interact you know, all the time. Um, and then they get to be educated on what dementia is like. So they're educating us about Warhol and giving us this experience, but we're also educating them about um, this, this illness that's affecting so many millions of people in the world. So if people are interested in volunteering or learning more about um, our program here at the Warhol Museum, they're more than welcome to call myself, Jen Marasco, at Presbyterian Senior Care's Woodside Place. And my phone number is 412-826-6536. You can find out everything on warhol.org. Um, we have curriculum lessons online, um, different exhibitions posted, and information about Andy Warhol. You might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles after our stories. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter at PGH on video or hashtag unsungpgh. Be sure to check out our previous episodes and even our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org, as well as video and audio versions on iTunes and YouTube. Thank you for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. As always, I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. So I said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy, cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I outran a pace car.